Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Andy Brassel, you lucky things. Uh, we're going to be talking about the World Cup. But Andy, you are spending a lot of time in the Portuguese team this time around in Brazil. You've been in the Portugal camp. Um, so let's talk about them. Seems like a logical place to start. They sneaked in through the playoffs. I say sneaked in. They blasted their way in through the playoffs. You can um, say sneaked. Yeah. Ronaldo outgunned Ibrahimovic. And he's obviously the man that everyone's going to be looking at. What do you think Portugal? They're a very tough group. But how do they'll be looking to go through, of course, and go quite far. They, they will. And I think you have to say Germany and Portugal are the favourites in that group. With Ghana and, and USA. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's right. I, I think the interesting game from the uh, Portugal perspective is probably the second one. They're playing Germany in the mm. opener. In Salvador, and then the second one is against the US in Manaus. Yeah, and you think, especially the time of day they're playing it, it's going to be hot. And they probably suit them more. Wouldn't what, what, the, what, the US are, are really fit. Yeah, uh, okay. so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that second game really. That I think they need to aim to get something out of Germany in the first game, even if it's just a draw. Well, they played them because, in the Euros and yeah, stood that, up to them. That, that, that's right, and and they they lost. They were unlucky you know, that, to lose. That, yeah, but that puts so much pressure on them for the, the second game against mm. Denmark, and to have that pressure in the game against the US in mm. such an inhospitable climate against a team that's really fit, I, I think would be something quite tough. I mean, it's, it's a, a, a thing for Portugal that you think mm. if Ronaldo gets on that sort of run, you take them all the way to say the semis or whatever. Yeah, yeah. If a couple of those players around him, and there are good players around Absolutely. him, manage to, to step up and support him, they, they, they could do that. But they could easily go out in the groups as well. They're a funny team, aren't they? I mean, they, they've, they've, they've gone through the playoffs. They often cough and splutter their way to the tournaments. Yeah, three successive times, three successive mm. major, major tournaments they've qualified for but the they, playoffs. But they, of late, have performed fairly well in tournaments. I mean, yeah. the last one, it was only a penalty shootout against Spain that put them out. Yeah, that that's dominant right. Spanish side. That's right. And if you think, you know, semi-finals in mm. Euro 2008 and um, World Cup 2010, you know, this is a nation of of 10 million people who mm. in the past have solely produced wingers. That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not bad at all. Yeah, well, who, but who's, uh, who's going to play up front for them? Um, it's it's going to be Elder Postiga. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, people sniff at that, but he's got a, a comparable mm. international goal ratio, goals to, goals to game ratio with Wayne Rooney. And it, the most important thing is, he's a foil for Cristiano. Yeah. And, and that's what matters, getting the most out of him. Like Paolo Bento, the coach, he's no tactical genius or anything mm. like that, but he's someone who realises, which more international managers, I think, should realise, play players where they play for their clubs because you haven't really got time oh, to coach them. And especially with Ronaldo, just play him exactly where he plays for Real Madrid, on the left, cutting in, give him a bit of freedom, make the whole team work for him. That's what it's all about. Is there a danger, though, with Ronaldo at the World Cup that... You know, it's in Brazil, a lot of the spotlight will be on him, yeah. of course. Will he try and do it all himself? Or will he fit in more? Because I remember when Deco used to play for Portugal. Yeah. I thought actually he was their main man and Ronaldo yeah. was, was, was slightly... Um, well, he was to, at that age. Yeah, yeah. Put, to, put to one side. Whereas, is Ronaldo going to think, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have this? Because that You're thinking Champions League final 2009, Basically, aren't you? yeah. I was there, bro. And I was sort of, part of me is slightly worried that he may try and, uh, and do it all himself... But then, but then on the other hand, though, you do want him to step up and try and do it all himself. Yeah, there's a fine balance. Yeah. There? But I think the team, as I was saying, is collectively quite mm. well set up for him. I mean, the most important thing, I think, directly where he is in the field, with him starting on the left, is having Fabio Cointrao right behind him. Yeah. And Cointrao's yeah, played I'm a big fan into, of Cointrao. I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> He's played himself into really good form in the last couple of months for Real Madrid, made yeah. himself the first team. And when he plays well, Cristiano plays well. They've got a great link together. They're good mm. mates off the pitch as well, which I think is... is, is you good mates with him calling him Cristiano as well. <laughs> well I, I, I want to separate him from Ronaldo, it being the World Cup in Brazil. The real Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Benzema said that when he signed for Real Madrid and was not especially popular. Oh, is that right? For, for doing so. The, the, the true Ronaldo, he said. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Right, well, uh, there's the, the Portugal roundup for the World Cup. Andy Brassel, marvellous stuff.